All right, good afternoon. Go ahead and call to order the regular meeting for the City of Murfreesboro Board of Zoning Appeals for April 22nd, 2015. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the consideration of minutes from our regular meeting on March 25th. Those minutes are included with our agenda materials. Are there any changes to those minutes? Nope. All right, if not, they'll stand approved as presented. And we'll consider uh, new business, first some variance requests. First one there is application Z15020 uh, by Mr. Davis Gilliam of Sims Realtors and Auctioneers uh, for Warren Johnson. He's requesting a five foot variance from the uh, zoning ordinance, which requires a minimum 10 foot side yard setback in office general residential district. And this is for property located at 1272 Dow Street. Mr. Lewis, if you'd review that application. Yes, sir, please. Chairman Rogers. Uh, this subject property is located on the east side of Dow Street at the east end of Highland Terrace. Uh, the property is zoned OGR, like you mentioned. And according to the uh, property assessor's website, uh, the building at uh, 1272 Dow Street was developed as a medical office uh, and built in 1980. Uh, and it predates the, the current zoning ordinance, which was adopted in 1984. Uh, a survey shows that the building is, is actually located 5.85 feet from the north side property line, uh, and the side yard requirements for this district is, is 10. Uh, the purpose of the request uh, by the owner, is he is uh, he's retiring and he wants to sell a property, uh, and this raised a red flag with the survey that, uh, that came through. Uh, the encroachment is complicating the sale and preventing title insurance from being issued. Uh, the site is located on 0.68 acres, uh, and it's adjacent. The adjacent property to the north is developed with a dental office. The adjacent property to the south is developed with a medical office, uh, and the property has access to terrace, uh, Highland Terrace. Uh, the variance request is for, is for a waiver from the minimum required 12, 10, excuse me, 10 feet separation between the building and the property line as referenced in the zoning ordinance. Uh, like say, when the original building was built in 19, or, uh, 1980, it was built 5.85 feet from the nearest point on the property on the property instead of the 10. Due to the proposed sale uh, of the property 35 years later, the conflict has arisen and thus the variance is being requested. Uh, the applicant is requesting a five foot variance in order to accommodate the encroachment into the side yard setback. He also states that the condition of property is not a, is a result, not a result from any deliberate action by the owner and, uh, and the city uh, has already actually approved the construction of the building, which dates back to 1980. Uh, Mr. Gilliam is in the audience and uh, will be able to answer any questions and, uh, and I as well as will be able to answer any questions you may have. All right, thank you, Mr. Lewis. Any questions for Mr. Lewis? <clears throat> All right, Mr. Gilliam, anything you'd like to add to your application, sir? Mr. Chairman, I think uh, Lewis summed it up pretty well. I, I did speak with uh, Dr. the doctor that joins the property. Uh, excuse me for forgetting, but the doctor that joins the property on the left-hand side of uh, Dr. Johnson's property this morning. He said that he remembered years ago giving uh, uh, something written to the city authorizing the encroachment and that he has no problems with uh, that today and didn't feel like he needed to be here present today to speak on his behalf. All right. Uh, any questions for Mr. Gilliam? All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This time we'll conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against the application, if you would please come forward. All right. Seeing none, declare the public hearing closed. Open the floor for further discussion or motion. No further questions. I'll make a motion to approve the variance request. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Mr. Gilliam, that application has been approved. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. All right, uh, we'll next consider application Z15021 uh, by Mr. Tim Lake. He's requesting a five foot variance from the city of Murfreesboro zoning ordinance, um, which uh, does not allow detached accessory structures 
on residential lots to be less than five feet from any side lot line, as well as an 8.35% variance from the ordinance uh, for um, concerning uh, maximum lot coverage. And this is for property located at 115 North Highland Avenue. Mr. Lewis. Yes, Chairman Rogers. Uh, this property is located in the downtown area of Murfreesboro where the lots are a lot smaller than, uh, than the typical subdivision lot. And a lot of the lots downtown have problems with, uh, with building additions and, and adding uh, you know, detached structures because of the size. And actually the zoning ordinance doesn't, uh, not very user friendly with downtown properties. Uh, and uh, that's the reason they're coming for the BZA today. The property is located on the west side of North Highland Avenue, uh, one lot to the north of East Main Street. Uh, he is, the applicant is proposing to build a detached accessory building behind their house uh, on the irregularly shaped lot. Uh, it's irregularly shaped because additional property was added to the original parcel. Uh, the additional property is also zoned differently than the property that's fronting on uh, Highland Avenue, or Highland, yeah, Highland Avenue. The small additional property behind the house is where the applicant would like to build the accessory structure. Uh, the zoning ordinance regulations pertain, pertaining to detached structures states it can, they cannot be any closer than five feet to any side lot line. The applicant would like to uh, build a structure and also keep the large trees that are in the backyard. In order to do so, he would like to move the building to the, uh, the north property line of that small parcel. Uh, and uh, is requesting a five foot side yard uh, variance in order, to, uh, in order to do so. In his letter to the board, he states that uh, the rear yard is exceptionally narrow and building the accessory structure would render most of the remainder of the yard useless and require removal of one or more of the mature trees. Uh, if the variance is granted, the accessory structure would be constructed on the northern property line and would resolve the issue. The remaining yard would be about 16 feet wide by 30 feet long, adjacent to the structure, and 30 feet wide by 23 and a half behind the structure. Uh, all existing mature trees would be undisturbed, and the distance between the proposed structure and the existing neighboring structures will be 16 feet. Uh, he's also asking for uh, an 8.35% increase in the maximum lot coverage, according to the zoning ordinance, this will allow the future construction of a carport or a garage, car, uh, carport or a garage behind the existing house. Uh, currently, there's a metal structure which looks, resembles a metal carport uh, and is currently being used as a carport. In his letter, the applicant states that the, the variance is due to the unusually small square footage of the lot for the property zoned RS10 and RS12. They're both, uh, the property has been surveyed and the total square footage of the lot is uh, 7,842 square feet. Uh, an 8.35% increase would allow a 22 by 22 carport or garage in, in, the, in the area where the future uh, uh, carport or garage is where they're proposing. Uh, the lot is very unique in size and shape compared to the typical RS10 and RS8 lot. Uh, that you normally see throughout the city and is also compared to other lots in the downtown area of Murfreesboro. The applicant feels the unique conditions of the property are not related in any way to the owner's actions and respectfully request the board to grant uh, the requested variances. I'll, uh, Mr. Uh, Lake is in the audience and uh, I'll be able to answer any questions you may have regarding this property. All right, questions for Mr. Lewis. The detached structure, so it's not a garage? Uh, Mr. Lake can probably answer that. I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to be a garage. It may just be some kind of a, uh, a detached accessory structure. Are you speaking of the proposed structure or the one that's already in existence? Well, if I'm understanding the uh, application, there, it sounds like you, you're wanting to put uh, a structure at the back part of your lot. Yes, sir. Okay. And then in addition to that, you're wanting to put a carport uh, attached to the existing structure that's on the lot? 
Uh, no, the, the future carport or garage is, is something that uh, we're, we're not exactly sure what we'd like to do with that right now. There's an existing, uh, just a metal carport that was there when we bought the house two months ago. Um, and it's candidly pretty unsightly and we'd like to get rid of it. Okay. Uh, and uh, but we want some kind of solution there in the future for because that is where uh, where the cars are parked on the property. Uh, the structure that I'm proposing to be uh, placed on the lot line, the north lot line, is uh, is going to be an accessory detached garage. Okay. So would the carport be attached to the uh, this garage that you're speaking of, or no? No, they're they're not near each other. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a drawing, uh, if they'd show the, the monitor, it, it kind of shows the site plan where the house is and uh, the heavily highlighted uh, rectangle is the, uh, the detached, I guess, garage or accessory structure in the little small section of the property. And where it says covered carport, kind of in the middle, it's just right directly behind the house. That's where the current existing uh, carport is. In your agenda package, I, they, I show some uh, some photographs of the of the carport. There's one of the carport and then the vacant property behind. So, uh, will this be um, need to be in two motions? One or one for the the five five feet change and one for the yeah, I would think so. I do have a larger drawing. If you'd like to see that, that yeah, be. I don't. I don't know that I got pictures for the. Yeah, I don't see a drawing that we're speaking of. Okay. Well, I don't have that. I'd well, take one. Thank you. Yeah, yeah Francis and I can share. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, Mr. Lake, I think we're all still a little confused about how this is going to. Lay out. We've got. Okay, I did, I did say that. Look, I'll turn it that. So, is the the covered par carport that's shown on the drawing a, a, that we had on the screen just a second ago? That's that you're proposing to come down and replace in its same footprint another carport that's less. It's, it's more aesthetically pleasing, I suppose. Yes, sir, in, in the future. We don't intend to do anything with that immediately. Okay. Size-wise, though, it's going to be the same or substantially similar to what's currently there. Is that it, fair? Well, it could be, uh, according to what we're proposing, it could be slightly larger because this, uh, the, the existing one is approximately 20 by 20, and the uh, variance that I'm requesting would allow for up to 22 by 22. So it's, it's very similar. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, now with regard to the, the detached garage, how is it, is it going to be for cars or is it going to be for lawnmowers and other stuff? Uh, the, the cars we intend to park in the area where the carport is. Okay. Uh, and so it, it would be for a trailer, for lawn equipment, for things like that. Okay. How, and how would you access it? Would you, would you come in from the south or would you come in from the east? From the, actually from the Short side from the drive, the driveway is on the north side of the property, the north side of the home, and uh, it actually the the entire back area behind the home is concrete as well. And so uh, you can see from the drawing there, but there'd be very little concrete needed to be added in order to make it to the the garage. And so the entrance of the garage would face Highland Avenue. Okay, gotcha. And would you be getting rid of the privacy fence, or or no? Um, I, it would have to be it would have to be modified in some way uh, because it's uh, right now the the privacy fence is actually one foot uh, away from the lot line. Okay. And so, uh, to be honest with you, I don't even know if that's my fence or the neighbors. So okay. I would have to negotiate that with them to see. Kind but of, do you think that you would keep a fence or no, irrespective of whose it is? There, or? there would need to be a fence. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, but I would I would expect that the wall of the garage would serve as. Part of the fence, and then the fence would attach to it. There you go. Yeah. Okay. All right. I talked with the uh, building and codes department, and he's uh, proceeding with uh, going before the construction board of adjustment and appeals because of a structure being within five feet of the property line. Uh, and I think they're meeting. It's a week from tomorrow, I believe. A week, yeah, in about in about a week. So they'll have to rule on. 
the kind of material that will be on that side of the wall uh, on the property line. Speaking of that, what, what kind of material is it going to be, the, the detached garage? Uh, we're, we're trying to make it this, as similar to the, the makeup of the house, which is a combination of hardy board and, uh, and brick. They're also going to have to come before the Historic Zoning Commission because it's in the Historic Zone. So he's got several hoops to go through. He's going to have all kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> just get started. It's just a way for me to get out of work a few times. Huh? <laughs> all right. Any other questions for Mr. Lake? All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, at this time, then, we'll conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would, please come forward. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussion or motion. Remember, we've got two parts of this application we need to consider. If there's no further discussion, I'll make a motion we approve the five-foot variance. Uh, I don't believe there were any conditions. I'll no, second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? All right. Now consider the uh, request for the 8.35% variance from the maximum lot coverage requirements. There's no further discussion. I'll make a motion to approve the 8.35% variance. Second. All right, motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Mr. Lake, that application has been approved. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, uh, next is application Z15022 by Mr. Enoch Gerald of Huddleston Steel Engineering for Fellowship Bible Church. He's requesting a variance from the uh, Murfreesboro Zoning Ordinance, which states parking areas for institutional group assembly uses, which in this case would be a church, shall not be permitted in the required front yard. And this is for property located in a residential single-family RS-15 zone at 4236 Veterans Parkway. All right, Mr. Lewis. Yes, sir. Uh, this property is located on the east side of uh, Veterans Parkway, approximately 1,000 feet south of Highway 96 and uh, just south of Jack Burns Drive, which leads to the new overall Creek Elementary School. Uh, Fellowship Bible Church constructed a new sanctuary in a parking lot in uh, 2014 at this location. Uh, the church, they want to uh, add to their existing parking lot by adding more parking spaces southward um, of the existing lot that faces Veterans Parkway. But while we were reviewing this parking lot addition, it became apparent that the existing parking for the church is located in the front setback, uh, and it just wasn't caught. It's not permitted according to the zoning ordinance. Uh, according to the zoning ordinance, the front setback in the RS-15 zone is 40 feet from the existing, uh, at, is, is 40 feet, and the existing parking is encroaching into it by 15 feet along Veterans Parkway. And they're also wanting to request parking, some future parking along Jack Burns Drive, uh, and they're also requesting this uh, variance to extend to the future parking that's going to be adjacent to Jack Burns Drive. Um, in the letter to the board, the applicant states the, the topography on the site uh, will require the parking to vary anywhere from two to four feet below the existing roadway elevations at Veterans Parkway. The elevation change combined with the church landscaping along the, the parkway provides screening from the headlights from across the house from the houses across from Veterans Parkway. Uh, landscaping along Jack Burns Drive appears to be uh, only the only measure left to provide relief from the headlights across the street of Jack Burns Drive from the existing as well as the parking, the future parking for the church. If the board so chooses to approve the variance request, staff would recommend additional landscaping along Jack Burns Drive to screen uh, headlights uh, from the existing parking and the future parking spaces for any development on Jack Burns Drive. Uh, Mr. Clyde Roundtree is uh, representing Huddleston Steel, and Mr. Monty Waldron uh, is uh, also here from the Fellowship Bible Church uh, in attendance. 
and uh, and they will and I will also be able to answer any questions you might have after the public or before the public hearing. All right, thank you, Mr. Lewis. Any questions for Mr. Lewis? All right, uh, Mr. Rountree or Mr. Walter, anything you all, you all would like to add to the application? Here, Mr. Rountree is, and Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Walter is too. I guess Huddleston still made it. I'm Joey Ryan. I'm the design builder for Fellowship Bible Church. This is Pastor Monty Waldron. Um, I, I built the structure, but I came became involved after the uh, first round of planning uh, went through for the structure. So uh, we discovered this when we uh, submitted plans to the planning department for plans review to add the additional parking. Uh, they're, need, they're in need of 50 plus parking spots, which is good news for the church and for Murfreesboro. Uh, we were made aware that the existing parking was uh, in the front setback and uh, I, we believe what happened as best we can tell is the church gave some property to the city if I'm not not mistaken and when when those revisions went through for Jack Burns which was, was then Charity Lane the parking then changed quite a bit to accommodate the new road uh, put in for overall Creek uh, Elementary and going back through there so when those plans and revisions were made, submit them to the planning department, it just wasn't caught. Um, church didn't see it, planning didn't see it. Uh, of course, we didn't, we put it in as, as uh, called for and, and didn't notice it, you know, being in the front yard setback, we didn't know a variance hadn't happened or, so it was truly, truly an oversight by all parties. Um, I would also like to note that I believe uh, the, the concern about the, the headlights on Jack Burns, uh, formerly Cherry Lane, Across the street from there is not going to be residential. Robert, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's going to be it's commercial. I believe Kroger's coming right across the street. So uh, the concern for headlights and such, I believe, would be reduced since it's not a residential area. Pastor, you may have something to yeah. say. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I'd be glad to answer any questions. All right. Any questions? What is in this blank um, space between the existing building and the future parking that fronts Jack Burns Drive? Because there's just a a space for future development. So okay. we ha we did master plan the entire the entire area, and so there's a future facility and parking along Jack Burns and wrapping around the north. I'm sorry, the east side of the building. So so we we're just we just don't we don't have that other building and in, in our plan that yes, we have in front of us that would have to go through planning uh through the for the for building additions as well, That's well just, I, you're just looking at the master plan i was i was asking for the purpose of you know to see why that parking couldn't be bumped back gotcha. sure gotcha. sure gotcha there is some existing parking on jack burns that's in that ex, that would need a variance if i'm not mistaken robert uh, the existing parking along jack burns I believe it, yeah. it's, it's inside it, it also setback, needs so, uh, variance uh, that would the existing, existing and any future would need it as well okay. so we would need some existing an existing vari uh, variance for that and I, I guess could I add that our desire would be since there's existing parking in place we would love for the parking that continues to be like along the same lines of the parking that's existing currently Okay, so, so all, all we're dealing with right now is just you're you're wanting to extend that that parking lot that's on Veterans Parkway, uh, you know, 30, 40 feet to the south, right? Yes, sir. And and in the course of wanting to do that, it was discovered well there, the parking's actually in a setback on all along Veterans Parkway and and now Jack Burns Drive. <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay, and so we just need to, that, that's all we're dealing with. You need to clear clear yeah. that, right? Yes, sir. We, we just want to be able to continue parking on both sides of the property where, as they're currently designed, just extended. Which that's what the variance, I guess, would allow, is for us to continue in either direction. I guess that would be south along Veterans and east along Jack Burns. Okay. The next phase is, is the addition you're talking about along Veterans. That's the next phase, but we... 
would need the, the existing variance as well for the existing parking. Yeah. Okay. So are they going to have to come back before us um, for what they denote as future parking on the north side, or are, or is this variance encompassing? Um, since we're mentioning Jack Burns Drive, is this variance encompassing uh, that future parking, uh, assuming that future parking is going to be within the 40 foot uh, setback? Well, I'm, I'm uh, thinking that their request was for the, the parking on Veterans Parkway and the existing parking on Jack Burns Drive mm -hmm. and the future parking on Jack Burns Drive. Yes, sir. That was part of the application. We can do all that at once. Yeah. If, if the footprint, I don't get, I guess, changes. I had a question. I know that the entrance off Jack Burns Drive as you come in just to the left mm -hmm. where there's a detention pond. Yes, sir. Is that going to be adjusted or moved? The, yes, during sir. the process of this future parking? Yeah, the, the detention pond would have to either be an underground, turn to underground retention, or the master plan includes moving that detention pond to the, uh, to the east eastern side, property eastern line. property line. Okay. I just, when I was looking at it, I thought, how are they going to get parking in Right, here? yeah. <laughs> Mr. Halliburton, to uh, your, your question, we're already, we're already past the, the, the set front yard set back on Jack Burns. So I, my, my, my thought is if, if we do ever add, on, add additional parking on Jack Burns, since we're already uh, in violation of the zoning there, we're going to need that existing parking okayed and cleaned up uh, as a part of this because mm -hmm. we obviously would not like to rip off, rip out all that existing asphalt parking spots. And uh, so I guess it would encompass any future parking on Jack Burns <coughs> as well. But yeah. right. I guess assuming that this is getting really technical, assuming that the future parking would only be a 15-foot variance. Correct. Correct. And actually, I have a question, Mr. Lewis. Is the, is the setback on Jack Burns the same as Veterans? Is it a 40-foot? It's 40-foot. Okay. It's, it's uh, the front setback for uh, RS property is, is, uh, is, is 40 feet. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. So both. In short, we would just like the, the front, the parking that's built now that everyone was okay with, but in conflict, to be okay and to uh, extend what, what, what we're wanting to do in this next phase. Did I understand correctly that Jack Burns was built after the church? It was built in conjunction uh, with it. Swanson Development was a part of that. Um, so they had to give some property. The church had to give some property. So. They are, they are all built at the same time and came together at the same time. It was all a part of the same uh, time frame and development and a lot of coordination between uh, Swanson and the city yeah. went along with that. And that was intended to give access from both sides of the school. So there's, a, you know, there's an exit south of the school that goes on to veterans there, and then this comes around to the northwest of the school. So, so you're kind of in the horseshoe. Yes, Is that right? exactly. exactly. Okay. Right. Is, is is putting the parking so so deep into the setback going to affect? I don't know. Are there sidewalks uh, along Veterans or Jack? Yeah, there Veterans? are sidewalks. They're up on the up up. There's four or five feet above us along Veterans. This parking along Veterans sits four, three to five feet below Veterans. So there's a slope, Veterans, then it slopes down to our parking, parking there. So that parking, all that sidewalk is already in. Okay. Is there any sidewalk on Jack Burns? Mm -hmm. Yes, down, yes, down to our entrance. And it's already installed. Actually, yeah. it's all the way down to the northeastern corner of our okay. property. I forgot. So it's been fully installed all the way down Jack Burns and all the way down Veterans on, on your our property. property. Okay. Yes. Any other questions? Thank you, fellas. Thank you. All right, then at this time we'll conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against uh, this application, if you would please come forward. And seeing no one, declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussion or motion. Hey, Mr. Is sorry, Mr. Lewis. I'm sorry. Mr. Lewis, in, in, in light of their comments about the rezoning, or, or excuse me, about the zoning of the property to the north, uh, which fronts is front 96 or 99, 
Uh, no, uh, the thousand foot 96. reference was from 96. Okay. And the, the adjacent was from Jack Burns Drive. When you, your, your only recommendation was that additional landscaping along Jack Burns be added to screen headlights from the existing and future parking spaces for in development. In development on Jack Burns Drive, does that? And that's probably that, not necessary because, like he was mentioning, it's zone commercial highway, and it's you know if it was residential, <coughs> excuse me, it might be more important. If it's commercial, probably not as important. Okay, and we believe it is commercial. It's commercial highway on the on the zoning. It is. Gotcha. And is it okay for this to be in one motion for both uh, fronting both properties? Yes. I'll make a motion that we approve the requested 15-foot variance along Veterans Parkway and Jack Burns Drive for the existing parking and the proposed and future parking that is planned for along Jack Burns Drive. No second. All right, motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> all right, gentlemen, that application has been approved. All right, uh, we'll now consider some special use permit requests. Uh, looks like these are all for outdoor fireworks stands. First one is application Z15023 uh, by Mr. Alan Gauger uh, for extreme fireworks. He's requesting a special use permit in order to operate a, a temporary outdoor fireworks a retail site in a heavy industrial zone located at 1945. Northwest Broad Street. Right, Mr. Lewis. Yes, Chairman Rogers. Uh, this property is located at the southeast corner of uh, Northwest Broad Street in North Thompson Lane. It's currently developed with a commercial building that houses uh, uh, Broad Street Tobacco and A1 Cash. Uh, the applicant wishes to uh, locate a seasonal fireworks tent on the property. Uh, he submitted a letter describing his request and addressing the standards uh, for temporary vendors, as well as the site plan for the property and a copy of the lease signed by the property owner. Uh, the property was first approved in 2013 uh, for seasonal fireworks retailer. And according to the codes, um, the limits for the, well, for the seasonal fireworks, they can sell from June 28th to July 5th. Uh, the applicant is only seeking approval for July for the July 4th season. Uh, the tense hours of operation will be from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. on from July June 28th through July 2nd, uh, 8 a.m. till uh, 12 a.m. on midnight July 3rd and 4th, and 8 a.m. till 10 p.m. on July the 5th. Uh, the site passed all its initial codes and zoning inspections uh, after the application was made. The size of the tent is going to be a 30 by 45, which is slightly larger than last year's tent, it, but it will still comply with all the uh, zoning requirements. Uh, he, all, all the requirements that were met previously in the previous years are going to be uh, applied to in this case. Uh, there was a letter that come in today from CSX Railroad. I want to pass this out uh, for you all to have. Uh, and if the board refuse, or excuse me, if the board wishes to approve this request, uh, staff recommends uh, the standard conditions that certification be submitted that the tent is flame resistant or treated to be flame resistant and fire extinguisher should be kept on site at all times. The fireworks ordinance shall be posted on site. No fireworks are to be set off on site. Uh, must pass electrical safety test or inspections uh, must meet the minimum setbacks for all the industry for H1 for the HI zoning district. Uh, no vehicular access will be to North Thompson Lane will be allowed. Uh, one type three barricade as well as an adequate number of three foot tall traffic cones must be in place during the duration for the duration of the selling season along Northwest Broad Street uh, frontage subject to the intersection. Uh, along with North, on North Thompson Lane. And prior to erecting the tent, the applicant must have the water line 
that's located on the subject property field located. Uh, no tent stakes will be allowed within the 10 foot of the marked water line. Uh, the applicant is in the audience and I'll be able to answer any questions you might have about this. All right, thank you, Mr. Lewis. Any questions for Mr. Lewis? All right, uh, Mr. Gogger, anything you'd like to add to the application? The same as last year it was 2013. We had the 30 by 30, but we had the 30 by 45 last year as well. So it's, there's no change. Oh, same as last year. Okay. Last year, yeah. Thank you, sir. At this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application? And seeing none, I'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussion or motion. There's no further discussion. I'll make a motion. We approve the application. Second. Subject, subject to staff comments. All right. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. That application has been approved. Uh, next is application Z15024 by Mr. Wesley Reed for TNT Fireworks. He too is requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary <coughs> outdoor a fireworks retail site in a commercial highway zone. Uh, and this is for property located at 2000 Old Fort Parkway. And Mr. Lewis, I'm going to turn it over to you, but I'm going to make your life a little easier. We're going to just um, consider the, the conditions that you recommended uh, on the first um, application to be assumed Blanket on, coverage. on further application. Okay. That way you don't have to uh, repeat those. Okay, thank you. Uh, this property is located on the north side of Old Fort Parkway, east of North Thompson Lane. Uh, the subject property is currently the, developed as a Walmart Supercenter, and he, they wish to, uh, the applicant wishes to locate a seasonal fireworks tent on the parking lot on the subject site. Uh, he submitted a letter describing his request and addressing the standards for temporary vendors as well as the site plan for the property and, permission, and a permission letter from the property owner allowing the use of the property to, as proposed. Uh, the site's been approved for a firework tent from, uh, from 1996 through 2014, and all of the same standards uh, have applied in the, that apply in the past will be uh, should be applied to uh, to this particular case. Uh, the applicant is in the audience, and uh, if you have any questions for him or me, I'll be happy to answer them. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lewis. Any questions for Mr. Lewis? All right, Mr. Reed, anything you'd like to add to the application? All right, at this time we'll conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application? And seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed. Open the floor for further discussion or motion. It, do, it does appear that there was conditions seven, eight, and nine on the last one that wouldn't be applicable to this one, mm. under, staff, under staff recommendations. No further questions. I make a motion to approve the special use permit with the six conditions set by the staff. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, that application has been approved. We'll now consider Mr. Reed's second one. It's application Z15025 for TNT Fireworks. Again, requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary outdoor uh, fireworks retail site in a commercial <coughs> highway zone, and this is for property located at uh, 2012 Memorial Boulevard. Mr. Lewis. Yes, Chairman Rogers. Uh, this uh, property is uh, one of the two uh, new Walmarts. This one is located on Memorial Boulevard. Uh, it's on the east side of Memorial Boulevard across the street from Adams Place, uh, and which is directly in front of the Murfreesboro Airport. Uh, the applicant wishes to locate a seasonal fireworks tent on this uh, property. Uh, the applicant, he has uh, submitted a letter describing his request and addressing the standards for temporary vendors as well as a site plan for the property. He has permission from the property owner allowing the property to be used as, as proposed. Uh, this site has been used in the past from 1997 through 2012, actually in front of the airport. Uh, which was not part of the Walmart property, but the location itself is, is in the same area. So 
uh, all of the standards uh, that apply to the other to the to the zoning orders that will apply to this uh, in, in uh, this particular case. Uh, the applicant is in uh, in the audience, uh, and he'll be able to answer any questions. And uh, I will also, uh, if you have any. And also, same recommendations as the previous uh, application, I believe. All right. Uh, any questions for Mr. Lewis? All right, uh, Mr. Uh, Reed. Anything you'd like to add to this application? At this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would, please come forward. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussion or motion. If there, are no, if there is no further discussion, uh, I make a motion to approve the application, including the six uh, conditions set by the staff. A second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? All right, that application has been approved, and we'll now consider Mr. Reed's um, final application. It's a Z15026 uh, for TNT Fireworks, requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary outdoor seasonal fireworks <coughs> retail site in a commercial highway zone. Uh, and this, is, this will be located at uh, 125 John R. Rice Boulevard. Mr. Lewis. Yes, sir. This, uh, this property is located on the west side of John R. Rice Boulevard, north of Old Fort Parkway. It's uh, the location of the Sam's Club. Uh, and the applicant wishes to locate a seasonal fireworks tent on that property. Uh, he submitted a letter uh, describing his request and addressing the standards for temporary vendors as well as the site plan for their property and permission letter from the property owner. Uh, the same, app, uh, same standards apply for this case as the others, and uh, the applicant is in the audience, and I'll be able to answer any questions you may have. All right. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Any questions for Mr. Lewis? I think there is. You, you added one recommendation. It's tent stakes pen, penetrating the surface of the parking lot will not be allowed within 10 feet of the, the existing water line. We must have a water line issue on, on this one. Uh, I'm assuming there was. There has been in the past, so I'm assuming there was. Still is. Sure. Okay. All right, Mr. Reed, uh, anything you'd like to add to this application? We do not penetrate the parking lot big water barrels. That's the only thing different. So there won't be any penetration within the parking lot yes. at all. All right. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, at this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would please come forward. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed. Open the floor for further discussion or motion. If there's no further discussion, I'll make a motion to approve the application subject to the staff comments. I'll second. All right, motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Mr. Reed, that application has been approved as well. Uh, next application is Z15027 by Ms. Julie Smith for Absolute Fireworks. She's requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary outdoor seasonal fireworks uh, retail site in a commercial highway zone for property located at 131 Cason Lane and requesting a variance from the uh, zoning ordinance which states that in the event the proposed location of a temporary vendor will be on the site of an existing permanent business. The number of parking spaces displaced by the temporary vendor will not total more than 25% of the total parking available on the site. All right, Mr. Lewis. Yes, sir, Chairman Rogers. This property is on the east side of Case and Lane. <coughs> Excuse me. Just south of uh, River Rock Boulevard. It's currently developed with a uh, furniture store. Uh, However, the building previously was a laundromat. The, the applicant has submitted a letter describing her intent in uh, addressing the standards for temporary vendors as well as the site plan of the property and a permission letter from the owner's authorized agent allowing the use of the property as proposed. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the tent, uh, according to the site plan, that. Uh, the site has been approved for tent uh, eight seasons for eight times between 2006 and 2014. Uh, all of the standards that uh, have applied in the past will be applying toward this one, including the variance for the uh, lot coverage and the parking. Uh, 
and Ms. Smith uh, is in the audience. Uh, we'll be able to answer any questions, and I'll be able to answer any questions you may have. All right. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Uh, the, the, there's a seventh recommenda rec recommendation. Uh, there shall be no outdoor product display or storage in the southernmost row of parking spaces. In addition, the delivery truck for the furniture store shall be parked off-site. They have a large delivery truck, which uh, takes up several parking spaces <coughs> and, and uh, has been done in the past. That truck has been moved off-site, so the, the parking can be accommodated by the parking spaces up adjacent to Case and Lane. All right. And I think the applicant has agreed to that past. All right, Ms. Smith, anything you'd like to add to the application? <coughs> All right, then at this time we'll conduct a public hearing. Anyone present uh, wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would come forward. And seeing no, declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussion or motion. And uh, this motion probably requires um, separate motion, or excuse me, this application requires separate <coughs> motions uh, for the two requests. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve this special use permit with the uh, comments from the staff. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Consider the, uh, the parking space part. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the parking variance. Um, subject to the conditions. Second. All right, have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Ms. Smith, that application has been approved. And uh, last but not least, uh, Mr. Jake Lloyd, application Z15028 uh, for Mid America Distributors. He is requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary outdoor seasonal fireworks retail site in a light industrial zone. And this is uh, for property located at 2240 Northwest Broad Street, Mr. Lewis. Uh, yes, sir, Chairman Rogers. This last application. Uh, the property is located on the north side of Northwest Broad Street and east of Battlefield Parkway. Uh, the location of the fireworks tent uh, will be in the front parking lot of the Kubota dealership. Uh, the applicant has submitted a letter describing his uh, request and addressing the standards for temporary vendors. As he submitted also a, uh, an aerial photo a photograph of the property depicting the property and the location of the tent. Uh, he's also submitted a leasing agreement from the leaseor of the property allowing the use of the property as proposed. Uh, this is the first year I think this has uh, uh, been located at this property and if you can pull up the on the screen it'll show the uh, an aerial photograph of where the tent uh, on the property is going to be located. Uh, it's in the front of the, uh, of the of the building uh, all of the standards that apply to all these other cases will apply to this and uh, I think I included another aerial photo or ph photograph of the location of the area of the of the proposed tent mr. Lloyd is in the audience uh, and he'll be able to answer any questions as well as I do uh, either before or after the public hearing all right thank you mr. Lewis any questions for mr. Lewis all right, Mr. Lloyd, anything you'd like to add to this application? The overhead? Yes, sir. Could we have that review? Could we have the, uh, the monitor show the, the, the location? Well... Maybe not. There we go. Uh, my only uh, question was, and, and this is definitely not a deal breaker for us. Um, it's, I just figured I would pose it and ask, and I probably should have talked to Robert about this, but I figured it was a little bit too late. If we move that tent a little further out into that parking lot, is that going to be an issue? Like as long as we're, you know, the designated feet off of the right of way and so on and so forth. This was commissioned to me by somebody else in our office. As long as it meets the, uh, okay. you know, it, it meets the setbacks for that I mean, particular be, district. Okay. 
and, and uh, we'll we'll check that when. Uh, okay. When well, I mean, same size, same lot, same everything, okay. same oh. left, right, just a little further, a little closer to the main road. About how? Yeah. What's what's the approximate location? How much farther toward the street? Fifteen, twenty feet. Okay. Something like that. Okay. Like I said, it's not an absolute must. It's just figured it never hurts to ask. I assume that is that a platted street that runs um, parallel to Broad Street. It is, and it would have to be, I believe, 42 feet off of that street. Off that street okay. So that would be the absolute closest, which is probably only going to allow me roughly, roughly 20 feet, if I was guessing on, off the top of my head. The only thing that, uh, if you set it out in the middle of that parking lot, where people you, people are going to have to be limited to parking, to the I guess the south. Right. Well, it's that was originally my thought, too. Um, but the thing is, is that uh, they don't actually use that lot, like any of it, really. Like, it, right. their customers don't come in there, and they don't keep equipment in there. And I asked him, <laughs> I happen to know the owner of the, of the Kubota dealership, and I asked him why they don't keep any equipment in that lot. And he said, well, that depends on if we want to keep it on our lot or if we want it to be stolen at night. And so... He said, we have to lock everything up. And he said, we've even had the lot broken to once inside the gated portion. And he said, so we don't keep anything out there. I said, all right, well. I guess what I'm saying is you don't want people whipping by on either side of that tent to get to parking behind it. You yeah, I mean? I mean, like I said, if it's an issue, I mean, we don't, we don't necessarily have to do it. I just figured that huge portion out there to the right um, kind of where those cars are now i mean there's nothing there yeah as long as it doesn't impede traffic circulation i mean people come in that ex that entrance there uh as long as it's not impeding the circulation it wouldn't be any closer okay this way like you know uh, i guess looking at the map northeast it wouldn't be any more that direction at all so it's still a good ways off the off the entrance could you put um, traffic cones or a divider of some sort sure. behind your tent, between your tent and the where the Kubota products yeah. are? Absolutely, we can, we can do whatever whatever y'all like to do. We and can that put way, orange cones out there. There or, wouldn't be any parking between your tent and the. Yeah, we can do that. I mean, would uh, orange cones be sufficient or? If if the board would 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 consider this, uh, I can talk to us over. If, if he would submit a a drawing like this showing the location of the tent, I could submit it to Ron Balachander, our traffic engineer, and he likes to look at these things to make sure that they're that's, located. That's properly. fine. That's fine as well. Uh, and if we need orange cones or anything like that, he can he can say that. We can uh, we can make adjustments for that. Okay. I'm sorry to bring this up last minute. Normally I don't do that kind of thing. Oh. All right. Any other questions for Mr. Lloyd? Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Uh, at this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application? Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and uh, open the floor for further discussion or motion. I'll make a motion that we approve Mr. Lloyd's application subject to the staff comments and uh, if he chooses to move the tent, working that out with staff. No second. We have a motion in two seconds. <laughs> uh, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Mr. Lloyd, that application has been approved. Are we done with you for the year? I've got three. <laughs> three cooking. No, no, no. What happened is we like have submitted in the past six, and this year I've done three of the ones. Six. The other ones are all pending. Very possibly not going to get several of them. All right. We'll just, we'll just keep you, put you on a pending. I <laughs> possibly see possibly. next month with three. I seriously doubt it. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, very good. Well, there's uh, any other business? Staff reports? I don't have any. All right. No other business, and we're adjourned.